This program is brought to you by Emory University. Uh, I'm Dr. Brennan, and I'm in the psychology department at Emory, and I'll be teaching a May Master class called The Psychology of Evil. And I'm really excited about teaching this class because the Maymester format, the three weeks of intensive study, allows for me to kind of get into three topics within the psychology of evil in a very intensive way. So for the first week, what I'm going to be doing is talking about individuals who personify evil. And so in our society, that basically kind of comes down to serial killers or children who murder people. And I'll be looking at that from a clinical psychology perspective. So looking at diagnoses that might be applied in particular cases. Just a brief example would be um, a serial killer from the 1970s named David Berkowitz, otherwise known as the Son of Sam. And he sort of terrorized New York City by randomly, apparently randomly shooting at people as they were sitting in their cars at night. And when they finally apprehended him, he said that he did it because the devil told him to do it. And the devil was speaking to him through uh, his neighbor's dog who barked commands. So this would be an example of a symptom that we would call a symptom of paranoid schizophrenia. And we could assess this individual and the evil behaviors he did in the context of clinical psychology and diagnoses and look a little bit at what might be treatment implications. So the first week we'll be looking at individuals like that. The class will be diagnosing, learning how to diagnose, learning those skills. And then the second week we're gonna shift gears and get a little bit more creative and think about what might be ways to prevent or maybe even identify evil before it occurs or before the behaviors occur. So we will look at group assignments where you kind of invent an evil detector or you know you could talk about maybe a questionnaire or an MRI measure or something that you would use that you think would identify in advance someone who might be capable of these behaviors. And then we'll shift gears in that third week into the fact that it's not always internal factors that predict evil, and we know from famous psychology experiments that situational factors can make even seemingly normal people do evil things. And so the classic example, Stanley Milgram uh, did a study of obedience where he, it was after the Nazi uh, concentration camp hearings, and he was wondering, you know, how many people would really obey authority to do terrible things to people? Set up an experiment where he basically had this big long shock machine and individuals had to deliver shocks to a participant who was incorrect in their responses on a, a test. And so he predicted that only 3% of his participants would shock all the way up to the maximum level, which was kind of a scary labeled thing that said XXS, XXX danger. Um, and he was surprised to find, and we still talk about this in psychology classes today, that 60 to 65 percent of people actually went up to that maximum shock level. So we're going to consider what it is about situational factors, what it is that could make individuals that are seemingly normal, everyday people, do evil things. And we'll top off the class with a debate at the end, which is kind of people assigned to sides to argue what's more important in the psychology of evil are internal factors or external factors the primary determinants of evil. Um, I'm looking forward to teaching the class and I hope you'll join me. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.